Hello and welcome to News Click. We have with us Professor Ijaz Ahmed and we'll discuss the emergence of the new right and the possibilities of the new left in the world. Ijaz, good to have you back with us. Coming back to the issue of the new right versus the new left, we have seen the emergence of the new right clearly. What, how do you analyze this new right? Uh, this new right is clearly, it has been growing for a while. Um, it has to do with a great many issues. Uh, the, I mean, we are talking the far right in the, in the sense that we have seen first the defeat of communism. Uh, alongside that, we saw a crisis and eventual collapse of, uh, of social democracy. Now, I think, and then we saw really uh, a disappearance of liberalism in any classical sense. So new liberalism was already very far out. You know, when you say this is emerging, this is liberal, Trump might do this, Trump might do that. You have to see what Obama has done. Obama has deported two, th two million people from the United States. So when Trump says he's going to deport, how many more is he going to deport? <laughs> so, <clears throat> so new liberalism is already very far right. I mean, very much in, in, in the right. So a lot of disturbance it has created and it has it is being opposed both from the far right and from the left. The left, <clears throat> the far right is not classically fascist. Again, there's a whole spectrum. There are groups, let's say, in, say the uh, in Greece, which uh, are which are openly fascist, or in Ukraine, they actually are descendants of fascists, and they are fascists. Then you have a, the, the the situation in France, a major European country where it used to be a fascist movement, kept moving on and on, and now uh, the, the, uh, the, the Le Pen is positioning herself quite away from that fascist legacy and has become, has it adopted a whole Republican rhetoric that we inherit the Republic which is being betrayed by these people who have sold France over to EU and so on and so forth. Uh, <clears throat> We stand for, for, for European culture. We have no problems with um, immigrants if you, they accept European culture. And it is because we have not been able to absorb even the ones that we have that we say that there should be greater restrictions and so on and so forth. We are seeing the emergence of a new kind of politics in which the institutional structures of liberalisms will be maintained, unlike in the case of the old fascisms. Um, <clears throat> those very institutions shall be used for the emergence, for the capture of political power by the far right, which has political positions very similar to the old fascists, minus the class radicalism of the Nazis. These are people who don't have any class radicalism. Um, Trump tried to. Trump posed to have person of the working class. You know, we'll take care of the working class. Uh, Democrats have sold them away, so, sold them down. I, coming from the far right, I will take care of the working class and so on, but this is not genuine. Now, the other side of it is that if the right gains 10, 15 percent, it becomes very dramatic in countries like Denmark or, you know, wherever. The left also, they, you know, in different countries, left. What we are not seeing is the emergence of a Marxist left, of a communist left. But within the political spectrum of politics that now prevails, Corbyn is as leftist as you can get. And 
Corbyn's emergence is again the same sort of thing that from the right Trump is. Who before two years before he took over the Labour Party, who could have imagined that this kind of a leftist of a very old stamp, uh, Labour Party leftist of a very old stamp, would would not only win the win the leadership once, when challenged by the entire Labourite leadership, he'll prevail again. So you have this. Uh, likewise, Syriza is bigger than Golden Dawn. Still, is much bigger than Golden Dawn. Um, Pajamaos is a major figure. Now, they have great many problems. Some of them uh, may be irresolvable at the moment. Um, they, have, they, they have a view that you have to save the EU because if the EU collapses, forces of, of the far right will be rampaging all over Europe. I think they are wrong, but they make a fairly sophisticated argument. Uh, now, with that argument, very interestingly, Cyprus and Varoufakis came to completely different conclusions as to how to, although they agree on that, you know. So within the left, there is a kind of a crisis developing, but there's also, I think, a, a, a left emerging. Um, when it will gain quantity where, we don't know. Well, that's an interesting proposition that essentially what we, are ha what we are seeing is the collapse of the old forms, whether from the right or from the left, and emergence of new forms in which the right has an advantage because they don't want to really upset what is there and just mold it more on a white nationalist platform and so on. But the left has a much bigger task of rediscovering the political project of the left. And in right. Western Europe, that and as well as the United States. There's plenty of left around. There's plenty of left around. It's, you know, it's splintered, scattered, doesn't have a, 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 a project on which it can work. Meanwhile, the world situation, you know, is, is so historically unprecedented. You have, on the one hand, a terminal crisis of Western capitalism, a deep crisis, and all of these things that we are talking about have to do primarily with that crisis. At the same time, you know, for the first time, the center of gravity of capitalist power has shifted to Asia. They want to do a Cold War with China. Soviet Union was one fourth the size of American uh, economy when they bankrupted the Soviet Union through the arms race. An arms race with China will bankrupt them. You know, the Chinese economy is larger than theirs. And ultimately, that, that economy, that economy will determine. Um, it will be ultimately determining. Likewise, all these messages they're trying to send to Europe, the economic attraction of China and so on. So I think that is part of the crisis of Europe, that it, European left that it doesn't understand the world it, it is inhabiting. It will have to understand that the, 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 the ground from under their feet is slipping. The whole dominance of the West economically is changing and that envir environment yes. which is changing is something the, the Eurocentric uh, forces don't seem to understand, that there's a strategic shift taking place. And this decline will not you know, it, I mean, 500 years of history cannot be reversed in 5, 10, 20, 30 years. So the accumulations are very great. That, 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 that's my point. That even in the times of deep crisis, their patterns of life are <laughs> entirely of a different order. You know, so, but that reversal has started. Um, what is interesting 
to me also in terms of what we are discussing is that India is making its transition from the liberal to the far right with all the trappings of the liberal institutions. Uh, um, China is not making a political uh, a, a transition to political liberalism. It may be liberalizing its, its, its economy. And because it is still a purposeful national state, it will not liberalize its economy to the extent to which others have. Um, <clears throat> so you have a, you don't have a liberal economy there either, <laughs> liberal politics there either, but it's a, it's a non-liberal politics of a completely different order. Thank you, Ajaz. We'll come back to you further on developments in different parts of the world, particularly with respect to what's happening to Latin America, China, and Asia next time. This time we focused really on the United States and what's happening in Europe, but we need to come back and discuss what's happening elsewhere as well. Thank you very much for being with us and hope to see you soon again.